modern mysteries to confound and confuse the student populace of the world, the comprehension of Mr. Boolean's magical triad of logical arguments is among the most regular challenge. Okay, ghost lips, you've lost me already. Magical triad? Are you on some kind of extra strong librarian brain tea? Will you keep out of this bit? I'm trying to preface the lecture. We'll get to you in a minute. Okay, but there, there better be a few laughs in this. Boolean logic is employed by most search engines and databases, permitting, nay, empowering your literature searching to reach the very summit of scriptural sophistication. It all sounds well dodgy to me. Will yo? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, please, please be quiet, yes, yeah. This is a library, you know. Now, by examining our three simple examples, soon you, the humble student, will possess the most powerful weapon in the information coister's arsenal. Is it some kind of hand grenade? And is a way to focus the search, to make it more specific. Let us take the example, jam and bread. Ah, oh, yeah, yes. Now this sounds like an example I can get behind. Uh, or better still, inside me. Now, Professor Weasel, what would you do if you wished to find an article on jam and bread? I'd have my head examined. I mean, what do you think I am? Some kind of hypoglycemic home economics teacher? It's just an example. I mean, can't you just play along for one moment? Okay, well, in that case, I'd head straight for the news agent and buy a copy of Popular Jam Monthly. Now available in colour, and this month with a free sample of Bilberry Jam. Yummy! No! No, you would head straight for the databases, like the Web of Knowledge. I would? Okay, well, you're the librarian, Goose. And what would you do with the database? I'd get a wooden spoon, like this, and I'd beat the keyboard repeatedly until it told me about bread and jam. Surely that's the way to solve it all. You stupid weasel. You search for bread and jam like this. Thus, it would tell us where we would find articles on both these subjects. I still think the news agent would be a better bet. Or is a command used to link two synonymous terms together. They dirty beggars. Synonymous, it means alternative. You know, different words that mean the same thing. Oh, like librarian and prat. Yes, 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 like librarian. No, no, I mean, for example, like jam and jelly. Jelly is totally different from jam. It wobbles, and I generally find it comes in the shape of a bunny rabbit. True, but what if you wanted to find articles on jam from the USA? There, they call it jelly. Really? What do they call bread? Toothpaste? Don't be facetious. You would search on jam or jelly. Now, being all inclusive like this is a very important step when you're conducting a literature review. A literature review for jam. It's an example! And of course, if you're clever, like a librarian, you'd combine it with an statement too. If I were clever, I'd be doing something more edifying than this tosh, you know? I'd be doing Shakespeare or Pinter at the Globe! Just play the gig, love. So, Professor. How would you search for jam, jelly, and bread? Um, I'd do this. Ah, oh, almost. But you've made the classic beginner's mistake. What are you calling a beginner, BK? You need to include brackets around your rule statement, like so. Why? And more importantly, why do I care? Because there's a natural order to these things. And statements take place first. Without these parentheses, you would end up with a few articles on jelly and bread, and thousands on jam as well. Not what you wanted at all. Isn't parentheses somewhere outside Athens? Right, now for the final one of the trio. Not. Not what? Not. The last Boolean operator is not. Boolean operator? Will they connect me with someone who makes more sense than you? It's just what we call an or a not. Boolean logical operators. Now, not is a tricky fellow, and to be honest, if you can, I'd recommend using an and statement in preference. Look, I've slugged through all your crapola so far, so don't leave me hanging. 
Well, okay then. Let's pretend you love strawberry jam. We'd have to pretend I hate the stuff. Can we not talk about lemon curd? It's, it's made with eggs, you know. Look, there's no way I'll let you curdle this lecture. Oh, the ghost made a pun. Shut up. Look, um, yes, yes. Look, uh, you want to find articles on blackberry jam but not strawberry. So you could try this search. Sorted! Ah, oh, yes, but what if the article was called All About Blackberry Jam But Nothing To Do With Strawberry? Then it would be the one you'd be interested in after all. Assuming I couldn't find any lemon curd. Yes, but because you said not strawberry, it would be discounted, a false negative. Oh, right, so, so that's why it might be better to use and to make the search more specific. Of course, that's just the basics, and now you've learned them. Who said I was paying any attention? We weren't talking about me. Now that you've learned them, you could use them to make a really clear search like this. Oh, the whole meal makes very good toast. Yes, I suppose it does. So, that's all I need to know to search for articles. Hooray! I don't need librarians anymore! You can all go stuff your head in the card catalogue, or whatever it is you do for fun. It's the basics, certainly. Of course, we've not touched on truncation, limitation, or the use of thesauruses. Dinosaurs? First jam, and now we're going to learn about flipping the reptiles. I'm just glad I've got a secretary to do all my searching for me.